Hello, friends. Today we are celebrating Resurrection Morning. Can you imagine our Creator died for us? He totally paid our debt upon the cross. And then He rose from the dead after three days. And He offers His tremendous love and forgiveness and eternal life to everyone. And God longs for fallen humanity to be reconciled to him. But sadly, only some respond to his love and his gift of pardon. That wonderful man who died on the cross was literally our creator. This is really incredible. God the Father and his Son together created the universe everything. <clears throat> Later, in time when man went astray and couldn't conquer his fallen nature, God the Son came down from heaven and entered the womb of Mary and was given a human body. And he became both God and man together at the same time. And as a man, even though Jesus was tempted in every way, he never yielded and he conquered sin in the flesh. <clears throat> and then he offered his life upon the cross to totally pay our debt and to give us forgiveness and a new beginning. That wonderful man, I want to keep repeating this, who died on the cross was literally the creator of the universe, he and his father together. No words can describe this act of love. And he declared to everyone who believes, because I live, you shall live also, in John 14, verse 19. What a wonderful hope we have, uh, that we can also have a new body again, and that we will be resurrected and have perfect peace and joy for all eternity with our Lord. How wonderful. This is just incredible. And this is really, friends, the true meaning of Easter, resurrection morning. Our Creator died on the cross to thoroughly pay our debt. And he rose from the dead and lives forevermore. And those who truly follow him will live forevermore also. Well, let's do a little history here. Jesus was crucified on the very day of Passover in the Jewish religion. And this Jewish feast of Passover started 1,500 years before. And the Israelites were in bondage in Egypt at that time for several hundred years. And they had imposed slavery upon the Israelites. It was a terrible bondage. And Israel, actually Egypt, speaks of this world holding God's people in bondage. Well, then God sent Moses to set the people free from this bondage. God executed ten plagues upon the Egyptians. But the final one, the tenth one, was the most important one. God said, I'm going to send the death angel throughout all of Egypt. But everyone who applies the blood of the lamb upon their doorposts, the death angel will pass by. I will pass over you. You will escape judgment. But uh, everyone who does not will die. So the Lord said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. This is Exodus 12 and verse 13. Every household who ignored this warning was judged and died. Well, the message actually is very clear. It's the blood of the Lamb that saves us, that forgives us. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. His blood saves us from judgment. 
Remember John the Baptist? He declared in John 1.29, also in 1.36. He declared, Behold the Lamb of God when he saw Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now, anyone who takes that message lightly remains in their sins and eventually suffers eternal judgment. Jesus, as it says in Revelation 13, verse 8, in the purposes of God, he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Isaiah chapter 53, this whole chapter is prophetic of Christ's coming and sacrifice and death and resurrection. In Isaiah 53, verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. In verse 5, surely he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. In verse 6, we all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to our own way. But the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He bore it for us. And then in 53 verse 8, he was cut off out of the land of the living. In other words, he died. And then in verse 10, it says his soul was made an offering for our sin. This was not an animal sacrifice. His soul, his whole being was made an offering for our sin. Yes. And then it goes on to say, after he died, that he would prolong his days, speaking of his resurrection. <clears throat> what a wonderful Passover lamb. He totally paid our debt. And he rose again, and because he lives, we can live also. This is what really Easter is all about, friends. The resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Our Creator came to earth, became a man, and died on the cross so that we could be reconciled, forgiven, and have eternal life. Amazingly, the spirit of this world does everything to deflect us from the real meaning of life and of Easter. For example, what does the Easter bunny have to do with the Lord's resurrection? And what does chocolate Easter eggs have to do with the resurrection of Christ? At Christmas time, what does Santa Claus have to do with the birth of our Creator? Or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? What does that have to do with the Lord's birth? Satan does everything he can to distract people from the real meaning of life. Well, let's talk about our Lord's sacrifice now, the shedding of his own blood. What a wonderful Lord and kind Savior we have. Now, blood speaks of life. Without blood, there is no life. He poured out his life for us. Let's look at Leviticus 17 and verse 11. <clears throat> it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. And then Leviticus 17, verse 14. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is the life thereof. Blood is a very, very important subject in the scriptures. When Christ shed his blood upon the cross, he was pouring out his life for us. Life is in the blood. Well, let's talk now briefly about what Christ's blood does for us. In 
I'm going to mention nine things, and then I'll explain each one a little bit. This is what the blood of Christ does for us. Number one, it brings forgiveness through his blood. Sanctification, being set apart through his blood. We are made nigh to God by his blood. We have peace through his blood. We are continually cleansed through the blood of Jesus. Even our conscience is purged by his blood. We have boldness to enter the holy place by his blood, into his full presence because of his blood. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We're made perfect by the blood. Oh, well, I'd, I'd like to briefly explain each one of these. Let's talk about, number one, forgiveness. In Hebrews 9, 22, it says, Almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. Ephesians 1, verse 7, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Oh, how wonderful. <clears throat> redemption is to be released because someone paid our debt. That's what redemption means. Well, let's talk about sanctification through the blood. It says in Hebrews 10, verse 10, we are sanctified, set apart through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Set apart, sanctified. If you look at Colossians 1, verse 13, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We're in another kingdom now. We're no longer the children of this world. We have a new father. We're the children of the heavenly kingdom, set apart by the blood. We're also made nigh by the blood of Christ. Ephesians 2, 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes afar off are now made nigh by the blood of Christ. Wonderful access to God's presence. We can now come close to God, have wonderful fellowship with him. Not only forgiven, but to have wonderful fellowship with our creator. We also have peace through the blood of Christ. Colossians 1 verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile everything to himself. It's just wonderful what the peace of God can do. The peace of God, Philippians 4, 7, that surpasses all understanding, shall guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then, number five, we are continually cleansed by the blood of Christ. 1 John 1, verse 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, continually is cleansing us from all sin. A continual cleansing by the blood. But we have to be walking in the truth, walking in the light. Also, number six, a conscience that's purged by the blood of Christ. You know, a bad conscience is a tormented mind of things we've done, but the blood of Christ can even purge our conscience. In Hebrews 9, 14, <clears throat> how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience. Oh, to give us a clean conscience because of the blood of Christ. What's an evil conscience? It's guilt, it's condemnation, it's no self-respect. But the blood of Christ can purge our conscience and give us self-worth. 
a good self-image. I'm not talking about pride, but a good self-worth. Can you imagine the Apostle Paul, the terrible past he had, killing people and everything else, and now he is saying there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Well, we also have boldness to enter the Holy of Holies by the blood of Christ. Hebrews 10, verse 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter the Holy of Holies by the blood of Christ. What a privilege to have access into God's very presence because of the one who paid our debt with his blood. In the Old Testament, there was very limited access to God. But when Christ died, the veil in the temple was open and we have now access to God in his presence. Number eight, we overcome by the blood of the lamb, as it says in Revelation 12, 11, but in many other places too. And they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. We overcome Satan and his power because of the blood of the Lamb. Yes, in Revelation 3.21, we have this promise. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I also have overcome and have sat down with my Father on his throne. Oh, Revelation 3.21, underline that. Number nine, we are made perfect by the blood of Christ. Hebrews 13, verse 20 and 21. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. God working in us to do what is well-pleasing in his sight through Christ Jesus. Perfection is possible through the blood of the Lamb as we walk in the light. Let's appropriate all that the blood of Jesus has purchased for us and made available to us. In Christ is an answer for every situation and problem we face. Well, again, let's remember this. The salvation of Israel, remember in the time of Moses, was the Passover lamb. Egypt rejected the message of the blood and died. But Israel believed the message and lived. It's the blood of the lamb that saves us from judgment. The Apostle Paul said this, in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7, where even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. This is what Easter is all about, the death and resurrection of our Creator who paid our debt. He is the Lamb of God who takes away all the sins of the world, John 1, 29. It's amazing that on the very Passover day, when the Jews were celebrating the Passover, that on that very day was when Jesus was crucified. He is the Passover lamb who takes away our sins. So, <clears throat> let us obey and yield to the blood of the lamb and walk in the light. And may the Lord cleanse us from anything that's displeasing to him. God bless you abundantly. Happy Easter.